Mauritius, one of the most dynamic economies in Africa, a success story of political, social, and financial stability. Think about it. We had nothing. No minerals, no oil, or precious stones. So what made this success? You won't find it here, or here. Come closer. It's a story about people. If you ever call my name, I will answer. It's about our openness. It's in our DNA, proud of the multicultural origins of our people from Europe, Africa, and Asia. Our capacity to live and work together, our agility to do business with the world, our entrepreneurial drive and resilience define who we are. We are MCB. And in financial news, the unique global offer in financial solutions provided by MCB, the leading bank in Mauritius since 1838, has made them one of the few investment grade banks in Africa and the largest listed group in Mauritius. And just like Mauritius, our real value lies in our people and in our commitment. Today, our natural openness to the world allows us to empower new ventures in Africa and beyond. Our unique global perspective opens endless possibilities for international business. MCB, success beyond numbers. Bonjour tout le monde, on va commencer. Good afternoon everyone. On behalf of MCB, welcome. Um, it's been two years, I think, we have been in Teams meeting, so meeting virtually. I think today it's a good opportunity to meet in person. I do understand that we have got some friends and clients who are online, so welcome to you all. So today we have got some friends and partners who are from Europe, who are visiting us. So Baudouin de Torre, who is the chief executive of uh, AU Group. So Baudouin has been collaborating with MCB for 35 years. 35. 35. Okay. And he's the chief executive. So we do have also Ladislas Cassin, who is the executive director of uh, AU Group. And we have got Christophe Chéry, who is the chief executive officer of uh, Atradius for France, Luxembourg, and Belgium. So what's the topic today about? It's about how to protect your, sorry. sorry. How to protect your receivables. So, uh, Ashwin Dina, who is the head of uh, global and international corporates, will make a presentation. So, Ashwin, to you. Thank you. <coughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you very much for making time to be here today for those who are present. Thank you very much to um, whoever is connected on the Zoom call. I understand there's quite a few of you, so thank you very much for having responded positively to our invitation and for making time for us. We thought it uh, relevant 
to start our series of interactions with our clients ever since the restrictions have been lifted on a, on a very important subject. And that subject is how to make Mauritius relevant as an IFC for Africa. MCB is not the pioneer in trying to make Mauritius relevant. Uh, many of you who are in the audience have been doing it well before us. But at least our contribution to, to that idea, to that principle, is to contribute to make this jurisdiction one of substance, one of value addition for its clients, and one where we create stickiness for clients in this very jurisdiction. So what you're going to see as a presentation today from our partners, AU Group and Acradius, goes in that direction. It's a partnership that's existed, as Sanjeev mentioned, for 35 years. That partnership started on the domestic corporate banking front, just to explain the sort of uh, genesis of that partnership. But the intent is to see how we can extend that partnership to assist trade into and out of Africa along the various corridors that Africa is related to. So that's going to be the overarching objective, theme of what we're presenting today. All I can hope for is your valued comments because this is work in progress for us. This is work in progress for many of our clients. So really the intent of having you here today, we're not doing a sales pitch. It's not a sales pitch. It's really trying to gather your thoughts, your feedback on how we can make that product even more relevant, even more useful for your benefit and for that of your clients. And for that, I thank you in advance. So that's going to be the objective of today. So all I can expect, all I can hope from you is interaction. So for those who are in the room and for those who are you know, on, on, on the web, um, please, uh, don't hesitate. I've got a few slides. They, they seem to be a lot, but I'm pretty sure you know that better than I do. But I'll, I'll still put it on the slide. Uh, and it goes to what I was talking about, which is our humble attempt to try and bring this IFC to more and more substance creation and therefore of repute, to contribute towards this governance framework, which also comes with bank financing. You know that bank financing, some people will say, unfortunately, comes with a lot of conditions. Uh, but you will also agree with me that those conditions contribute to bring governance to the way firms are run, to the way business is conducted. And as I said, it's all about the corridors. That has been MCB's positioning. We are very Africa-centric in what we do. But it's also about the corridors that Africa has in terms of trade and investment with Asia, with Europe, with the Middle East. Now, again, I'm not going to dwell too, dwell too much into these points, but for, particularly for our clients who are on the call, I think what really needs to be noted is what, M or what Mauritius has to offer in terms of our investment grade rating, in terms of our environment, in terms of our compliance to various rules, <coughs> and um, in terms of the financial services sector. And I think MCB has some part to contribute towards the robustness and to the strength of this financial services sector. And finally, um, this is probably not very relevant in the, in the current context, uh, and I see Rama smiling, but uh, it's true that for many years, Forex controls is an area where we've prided ourselves on being, um, you know, offering a different, a different value proposition, and we can only hope that you know, the current context stabilizes as quickly as we can. Um, again, I'm not going to go into all of that. I think um, 
everybody here knows about that uh, in terms of what the Mauritius jurisdiction has to offer in terms of double taxation agreements and IPPAs. Uh, but let me just move to this one, and which is about, really about the positioning of, of MCB. Today, what we are really trying to focus on, but that's not the, that's not the only remit of our action, it's to attract more and more multinationals to do business in Africa. Now, we are not going to decide on their strategy as to how they will do business in Africa, but our attempt is to show to them what we can do as a bank with an African-centric appetite to assist them in what they are willing to do here. Um, we've seen it, Thierry is, has seen it many times, where you've got multinationals doing business and being accompanied by their conventional groups, banking groups around the world, but when it comes to Africa, it's a wholly different story because they consider Africa as being risky. Now, what are the different risk levels between more than 50 countries is another debate which they don't want to even get in. Uh, and that appreciation of risk is what MCB has uh, and what has allowed us to do business in Africa. Large regional African groups are also an area where we've been spending a lot of our effort. Now, everyone has his own definition of large. Um, but for us, it's all about helping growth. It's all about helping to put in governance. And it's all about value creation. And finally, funds. I think many of those in the audience here today uh, are very acquainted to, to this ecosystem of clients. For us, funds are not a type of client, but they are an ecosystem. And why do I say that? Is because when we deal with funds, our clients are not only the funds, but they're the entire ecosystem of those funds, particularly in the case of private equity funds, where we've been banking funds, general partners, investee companies, uh, and limited partners. We had a meeting today with a fund client, which was an extremely interesting meeting for, for one who invests into Africa and who were very candid and honest about the needs of their investee companies and how they struggle to find the right trade finance solutions in Africa, how they struggle to increase sales because they need to give credit. And they don't want to give credit without protecting their credit. And that was the subject of our discussion earlier today, which was a great one. And we don't think it was an isolated case. We, we, we really think it's a general issue. And hopefully the discussion that we'll have today will allow us to construct and enrich our offering through our partners to, to get closer to that solution that we need to provide to our clients. Now, at the bottom of the screen, you can see a whole breadth of MCB solutions. I'm not going to go into the detail of that because the focus of our discussion today is going to be around trade, trade around the support for financing trade, about the solutions for trade finance, and around the solutions through our Crédit Protection product, which has existed for 35 years. And today at lunch, we thought this is going to be Crédit Protection 2.0. So we hope we go in that direction along, along with you. So in a nutshell, why are we trying to do this for our clients very quickly? Because ultimately, when you are able to provide trade finance solutions, when you are able to provide protection around credit, a client can negotiate enhanced trade terms. I mean, very, at a very basic level, this is what comes to our clients as benefit. Cash flow benefits from it. When you've got a bank which has an investment grade status like MCB, it allows you to have more leverage in your negotiations when you do trade. For those who've been involved in that kind of business will know. So what we're really proposing is not, I mean, clients sometimes say to me, Ashwin, how much does it cost? Because banks charge for fees. 
But I think in the grand scheme of things, when you look at what we are here to discuss about, you will realize that for our clients, this can only go in the right direction by enabling growth, by enabling more sales, by enabling more trade. And the benefit of a time far exceeds the cost that comes with it. And my friends here will do a far better job than me at explaining the benefits of this, of this product. But the second point is really about MCB's approach to trade financing. Our approach over the years has really been a bespoke one one that is relevant to each and every client, that is not a one-size-fits-all, because it never works. And it's really about trying to see how we can extrapolate what we've done till now to clients who are trading in Africa, but more and more who are using Mauritius as a platform to create value around their trade activities, whether it's through procurement entities, whether it's through central invoicing entities or through regional treasury headquarters through Mauritius. And the last point, which is about Mauritius being a one-stop shop provider, I think we all agree this is where we need to head to be able to attract those entities to Mauritius that will bring value to, to the jurisdiction rather than being a simple jurisdiction of back office support. And we're not looking down on back office support but what we're really saying is, how can we add value? How can we bring those entities here that will not only use our past strength, but look at what other service providers have been doing in other quarters to be able to better their solutions for trade? This is really what I wanted to talk about. Um, I'll hand over to Baudouin, uh, who will talk about surely about 35 years of history but certainly what we can do forward. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, maybe you can imagine that 35 years, I am quite slow. No, I am not slow. It's just to say that uh, we start credit protection a long time ago, uh, but we adapt. We were very reactive and we adapt the product to the world and to the technology. We start with a fax, telex, Minitel, and now, of course, we are by internet and maybe we will be on the metaverse in the next years. Uh, very quickly, I just will introduce our company and I will let Ladislas to let you know what exactly we are doing. So, we are a broker uh, and uh, one best advisor in the world uh, regarding trade credit uh, protection and also financing and management of the receivables. Um, we were created in 1929, so we are quite young compared to the bank. And we are 100% uh, independent, which is very important. It's because we can work with all the underwriters all over the world. So uh, I can tell you that we start with one company called Euler at that time because they were the only one able to offer solution, uh, I would like to say, at the export for them. And we moved to Atradius. Why? Because they were uh, very reactive to offer us an internet product for all your exporters. Um, we have uh, policies in 77 countries. Uh, and we are located in 41 countries. Maybe you can show, uh, yes, where we are. Um, just to let you know that uh, when we are in a country, it's always to help exporters. So help exporters in doing business, to grow their business. This business must be safe and also for their investment. Why? Because you have a lot of uh, exporters and investors who want to be in some countries where you have some risk. And uh, I'm not going to go talk about Ukraine today. I will let uh, Christophe talking about Ukraine. But we have a lot of our clients who are in Ukraine and they have uh, securities regarding first their business and their investment. So maybe uh, Ladislas, uh, I will let you know, explain exactly what we are doing. 
and maybe if you have some more question during the, the meeting, do not hesitate. Thank you, Boudouin. Yes, as Boudouin said, uh, we are a specialized broker, and I think what I'm going to tell you, even if it can be, uh, seems to be weird, we are passionate in trade receivables. Um, we are specialized in those, in those items, and uh, this is what we do for more than 19 years, 90 years now. Um, more concretely, uh, AU Group, our aim is to support our client and MCB's client across the world to secure their business activities and to secure ex uh, um, in detail their trade receivables to protect against any uh, unpaid debt. That's uh, a huge stuff, but this is uh, what we are dedicated to and very proud to uh, accompany uh, MCB for more than 35 years now. Um, so this is what we do in the day-to-day. -day. Uh, a second, second item I wanted to, to mention to you is uh, all the business that can be do around uh, financing working capital. Cash is king, and it's uh, very important to, uh, when you secure your asset, uh, potentially to finance your asset. Um, political risk, we have a dedicated department um, specialized in securing all your investments. It can be interesting if uh, you or your customers, you advise, uh, are investing in, uh, in Africa, for instance, um, building uh, plants. Uh, you know how the, the level of the uh, investment, which can be uh, huge. So uh, we have a, a dedicated department uh, specialized to secure your political risk and your local investment. And, uh, and uh, we will be happy to present you uh, those, uh, those items with, uh, with MCB. Um, last but not least, not least uh, all, the, all the tools uh, running about uh, trade receivables. Uh, I mean, uh, it's important for all company to, stru to have a, cre a structured credit management, and uh, this is, uh, this is uh, another, another uh, services we can propose. Concretely, how it works. Um, I think the best example is uh, to, uh, to, to illustrate uh, how we do our business, is uh, to take the example of the credit protection we've developed uh, for those uh, last uh, years. Uh, we identify some issues. I mean, uh, running business is not so easy and there, there are lots of risks. So we identify the risks. We find the solution in the market, thanks to Atradus. And afterward, we, of course, our job is not finished at, this, at that moment. We are looking after and uh, assuming the follow-up of the solution we, uh, we, we found. And it is exactly what we have done with, uh, with, uh, with MCB. Uh, there, there was a need to secure trade receivables here in, in Mauritius. We have uh, found a solution in the, in, the, in the market all over the world with, uh, with uh, Atradius. And, uh, and now we are here today to improve credit protection, uh, to improve this, this solution uh, uh, in Mauritius, of course, but uh, across the, front, the frontier. Some key, key takeaways about, about credit protection, uh, even if Arnaud will go deeper uh, after, but uh, more than 34 years, five years, you get it. Uh, Atradius, uh, he's the, the main partner of this, uh, of this uh, solution. Uh, additionally, uh, five years, six years ago, we asked, we find, um, we were facing the success of credit protection and we needed to find a second partner uh, to, to, to develop uh, credit protection. So we've asked uh, Credendo to join the, the, the partnership and uh, we are proud to have this, uh, this second, uh, second partner. Um, about 800 decisions decision, decision live, that, that means that we have uh, about uh, 800 uh, customers uh, monitored by, uh, by uh, our partner at Radius and, and, uh, and Credendo. Um, to go, uh, I think I will leave the floor to, to Christophe because um, the objective today was also to share uh, our point of view and his point of view uh, about the, the, the global trend today and uh, not what's going to happen because uh, I'm not sure he could answer you, uh, but to give you more uh, clarification and his point of view uh, about, about the actual situation.
Thank you. Thank you, Ladislas. Hello, everyone. Also, a special hello to the 32 people at, uh, looking at us through uh, their screen. Um, so, why am I here? So, I'm heading uh, at Radius for Belgium, Lux Luxembourg, and France. Uh, at Radius is a credit insurance company, with number two in the world. And basically, I'm here because I was invited. <laughs> I was invited to be here today, but also at Radius as a company, was invited some years ago to support a strange thing with a, a bank in Mauritius? What, 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 what is this? And then indeed, uh, we, we, as a multinational company, at Radius number two in the world, said, okay, let's go for it. Why, why did we decide to go for it? Because, of course, the plan was really solid. The partners, the reputation of MCB was excellent. And also the perspective and the opportunities to grow were absolutely amazing. So we liked a lot the story that uh, Baudouin told us, and we decided to give access to MCB to all possible means to propose to the local business the best credit protection possible. It appears, after all these years, that it is a kind of a success. I, I think we can be proud of what has happened. And I also understand that if I'm here, it's also to boost <laughs> this, uh, this collaboration and see how we can go further to the next steps and next levels. So I hope that I can uh, be instrumental or a, a piece in the, in the supply chain to help you guys to meet the success you deserve with credit protection and the global trade solution in, in, in general. Okay, so what is Atradius? Um, Atradius is a company where people are doing surf. No, yes, probably, but first it's a credit insurer. And what is a credit insurer? This is a company, so our customers are producers of goods or providers of services that, need, that are looking for a protection when their buyers are in default, in payment default. And when there is a payment default, then we try to recover the unpaid debt. And once we can say, okay, we have not been able to recover this debt, or we have only partially recovered the debt, then we indemnify the remaining loss um, to our customers. So very easy to, un to understand. To do, this, to do this, as our customers are located around the world, and as our customers are doing all types of business, so for instance, this morning we were visiting a textile company, Textile is one of our biggest trade sector. I've just talked to some guys, to some gentlemen in fertilizers business. We, of course, have also customers in fertilizers. So, so all types of business are looking for credit insurance. So it means that you need to build expertise. You need to be capable. I hope I will be capable when I will talk to some of you after this presentation that I'm capable to understand, for your, to understand your business and also maybe connect to some things that we know in these, uh, in these activities. And how do we do this? First, we need to know you. We need to know the world. So we collect, we know, 260 million companies around the world. So we have recorded in a huge database, we have identified 260 million companies, and we are capable, <coughs> let's say we are capable, to give a credit advice, a kind of probability of default on all these buyers around the world. So, we are receiving information, we have clever people analyzing this information, giving quotation ratings to these companies, and then we deliver credit limits, credit guarantees, for instance, to uh, MCP. Okay? So, this is uh, our model. We are, we, are, uh, so we, we, we are turning roughly 2 billion euro uh, turnover a year. You see that we have some ratings. We are also, there is a special, and I think this is also a common story we've heard all along uh, these two days in Mauritius and that we, I also told. Uh, there is a focus on ESG, of course. So when you are, uh, our um, mission statement is managing risk, enabling trades. So we are managing risk, okay, of course. So risk, you, are, you also have environmental risk and all this kind of risk and enabling trade. What kind of trade are you enabling? So we are fully also busy with ESG. 
maybe to give some insight, some more insight on our value proposition. So we are providing credit insurance. This is the, the story I just told you. We are capable of doing this for multinational companies, so uh, uh, groups, international groups having th hundreds of uh, subsidiaries. Maybe we can uh, give a name of a company we are working together with, Boudouin. I think we can talk about L'Oréal, maybe, who have, who's having how many, how many subsidiaries? So in this program, we have 140 subsidiaries covered under one single contract with local management and local services. Special product. So uh, sometimes also we, we enter into specialties with longer terms, um, with specific conditions, political risk, the kind of thing that you hear. Probably there are some credit managers here around the table. Some things you say, yeah, it's a London-based uh, business. This is also the kind of things that that we do. A second very important part of our business is not only to provide cover, but also to provide collections services. So to get out there, to get unpaid premium, to get the money from the bad debtors. Very important for our business proposition, very, very important, because if we don't collect the money, then we, did, we have to indemnify it. And as our company prefers to become rich, then the more we recover money, the less we have to indemnify. So as well here, we have a network of uh, recovery agencies around the world, because you have to know the language of the debtors, you, you have to know the local uh, jurisdiction, and you will see in the numbers of Arnaud uh, that we have, we, in the credit protection program for MCB, we have, we have collected money uh, significantly uh, around the world to mitigate risks. We also do bonding, but it's not the point of today. And reinsurance, we are reinsurance, uh, we are reinsuring credit insurance company. For instance, our colleagues from CGI that you might know here in Mauritius are reinsured by Atreides. So I was also invited to tell you a story about the world economy uh, in all modesty and humbleness. <laughs> Um, so, what's happening out there? Um, look, um, so we were, happy, we were happy to see that the last quarters of 2021 and the first of 2022 was a kind of, was a, kind of a fairy tale. So, the business was booming ab about, uh, uh, around everywhere. Yes, there was some, some picking, uh, picking up prices and blah, blah, but the, 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 the number of defaults were historically low. Um, all business sectors were, were, were booming, and then uh, we have this crisis or this war happening in Ukraine. And it means that all the tensions has been exacerbated by this war for effective reason, but also for psychological reasons. And then, indeed, uh, the commodity prices increased even more. The energy prices e increased also even more, putting lots, lots, lots of pressure on lots of companies, maybe uh, almost in Europe. For us, as credit insurer, of course, we have expo exposure in these countries. So at Radius, in Russia, in Ukraine, we have a couple of hundred millions of, of risk exposure in these countries. It's going to be difficult, of course. But what we see, for instance, I don't know if any of you has, has business in Russia, that we see that companies in Russia, they are paying. So the domestic business, for instance, is not that poor. So the local uh, Russian companies are paying their local suppliers. It's a bit different when we talk about export from us, but import in their perspective. So there we see some tensions. But so far, so far, quite, surpri quite surprisingly, what is, what is happening in this economy is relatively OK. We expect, however, that the GDP in Russia will decrease by 10% this year. So in this case, this is, this, it's going to be a real economic crisis in Russia. You can, also, you can always say, look, Russia is only 2% 2 of the world uh, trade, of the world economy, then we shouldn't care too much. Yes, we do. Yes, we do, because we have also noticed that the side effects of what's happening in Ukraine and Russia is hitting lots of companies. Just because, even if it's only 2% of the world trade, it's quite more frequent in the integrated and global supply chains around the world. Even medium-sized company 
in their supply chain have noticed that maybe 0.5% or 1% in the, in, the, in the number of product inputs they need in their supply chain is coming or from Ukraine or from Russia. And we've seen, we, we are observing now the first tensions, the first payment default, mainly in Europe, due to a disruption in these supply chains. And even companies that if you look at them, they are in the very strong health. You look at their balance sheet, wow, the solvency is good, there are liquidities, but what you don't see in their balance is that indeed, in a part of their supply chain, it comes from Russia and it is completely disrupted. And then after a couple of weeks, they just have to say to their bankers, look, I can't produce anymore, I'm not receiving money anymore, and then I have to stop my business. We have the case, actually, it's an example I like to, to propose because it's a surprise for us, it's our job, but in Italy, for instance, uh, the company that are uh, uh, manufacturing the, how do you say this? The tiles, thank you, for the tiles, thank you. The, the input they are using, the ground they are using in their tiles is coming from Russia. Nobody knew, nobody knew, I didn't know, I didn't know it. And then all the, the supply chain in this industry in Italy is now under complete pressure. And you have lots of other examples, tires, of course car manufacturing, but you have many, many examples when you see that this, what can appear as a small issue for the world economy, is eating lots of company. And this is why we expect this year, in 2022, a serious increase in insolvencies around the globe. Again, mainly in Europe, because if you take some distance, talk to economists in Asia, even in Africa or in the US, they will say, okay, we don't see that we will be hit by this crisis. It's, it's a mainly a kind of European thing. We are far from there. Not untrue, not untrue. We, we expect that the, 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 the impact on the world GDP will be minus 0.3%, which is the, the, stati the statistical margin almost. But, okay, uh, we do see uh, that uh, the, the impact will be material, material on the European economy, and we expect, indeed, that this year uh, is going to be... Uh, um, a, a difficult year. I, I, I would not talk about a global crisis, but it will be a difficult year in terms of payment uh, default, uh, mainly mainly in Europe. You will be receiving these, uh, these slides. Do not hesitate to raise your hand if you have any questions, by the way. Uh, I'm, not telling, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm holding the truth. It's just our point of view in Atradius. Probably you have other views, and do not hesitate to to shout or to share. So I discussed already with, uh, about uh, Ukraine and Russia. Maybe I can skip these, um, these slides. Okay, it's good to come with a, as a kind of a Mr. Bad News uh, uh, on the world economy, but if when you are a, a, a good credit insurance, you don't only need or, or tell stories on how to manage risk, you also have to tell stories on how to enable trade. So grow without risks is probably the main value proposition that credit insurance or credit protection can propose to you. This is the, the basic thing. So it, I, I, I thought it, it was nice as well to uh, rapidly go through what we think are really promising markets uh, for uh, the time to come. Um, because when, you say, when, when we say that business might be difficult in Europe this year, it's also important to give you an insight on where are the areas where we feel confident that the business might be better. For instance, Côte d'Ivoire, Israel, Qatar, Taiwan are countries where we do feel that these are the st they will be the stars of this year. Maybe we can put more issues on it next year. Let's see, hopefully. Why not? So, uh, as a conclusion, I don't know if any one of you reads Chinese. Uh, this was proposed by one of my colleagues uh, in, in Singapore. You know, in economy, there are bad times and there are good times. It comes and goes. We know it. And even in the bad times, there are opportunities. So it's very important to stay calm. Even in the worst economic environment, there are positive, positive opportunities to get. In the worst rate sectors, there are always buyers of good quality. There are, there are always opportunities to grow anywhere. So in a crisis, there are always opportunities. And this is also 
with, with what we propose, how can I see, sometimes in the gloomy period, what are the, area, the areas where I can grow? What are the buyers that I can approach so that I can grow despite the difficult environment? Where is the rainbow in the rain? Okay. So, the world, the world crisis can compose of two elements, is risk and opportunity. Find the right balance between risk and opportunity. So, anyway, in all cases, do not panic. Stay cool-headed and keep the good spirits. Thank you very much. So I would like to hand over to not only my friend, but also the head of Global Trade Solutions with an MCP. <laughs> I've been, on purpose, I've been weak, so that you can, bright during, you can be brilliant during your own presentation, Mayarno. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Christophe. <clears throat> good afternoon to everyone uh, present, and good afternoon to uh, all the guests online. So I have, I think, the tough job to be the last presenter. So I'll try to be the rainbow uh, that Christophe mentioned. So my job today is to tell you about the opportunities, the opportunities of global trade solutions that the teams at MCB is here to serve. So why global trade solutions? Global trade solutions is here within the global transaction banking headed by Sanjeev Azari Singh. And uh, we, within the global transaction banking, you have the cash business and correspondent banking. We have the team of Global Trade Solutions, a team of Credit Protection and sales executives. Why Global Trade Solutions? We are here to really understand the business model of our client. We are here to understand the supply chain of our client so that we are able to propose to our client sophisticated uh, solutions and also advisory services where we're going to, as I think Ashwin mentioned, how we can enhance the trade terms, the mode of payment, and, all f and with that, we're going to increase our trade finance facility. So I think my, the, the partners, I, AU Group and Christoph, has talked a lot about the challenging environment. We are here to really enable trade. Enable trade by leveraging on different types of solutions. We've mentioned receivables, how to protect receivables, and with that, to do supply chain. We're here to also tell you about how Credit Protection has helped the domestic industry, and the future is now how to help global international companies, to help regional companies in Africa to get access to this platform to be able to, to have trade finance facilities. So you're going to tell me, but how do, how do we do that? How can, how can this help? I already have trade terms. My suppliers won't change. I'll give you an example. For instance, in, when we talk about traditional trade finance, a lot of, we use letters of credit. We say, but letters of credit, it's in the past. Today, we are in a context where supply chain costs has increased, and there are delays in, in delivery. The letters of credit can help a buyer to fix the cost in dollars, to be able to fix the delivery, because it is the buyer that will open the letters of credit. And now, for the sellers, it's good. It's good from the start, from an order, you already have a bank guaranteeing payment if he's compliant, he presents documents that are compliant. So then you're able to meet payment to your suppliers in hard currencies. Uh, I think Ajrin said earlier that there was issues, but we are, with letters of credit, you are able to mitigate risk and you are able to enable trade finance. Second pillars of our scheme is how we are able to leverage on trade receivables. This, I think, it's a very nice topic because when we are talking to finance a company in Madagascar, for instance, I'll give you an example, a concrete example. We have a company in Madagascar that seek trade finance facility from MCB. How are we going to do that? What we, we did is look at the balance sheet, look at the receivables, and say, what value can we take from these receivables? This is where our partners, AU Group and Atradius, is able to protect these receivables. We use that, and with it, we gave supply chain finance. Now, when we, gave, when we give supply chain finance through Mauritius, that doesn't mean that good has to go through Mauritius. The flow of goods stays the same. The flow of documents will come from Mauritius, and then we will do the financing here. 
And also, this client was able to renegotiate terms with his suppliers. These terms are now more favorable to him. This is where the, I think the, our platform uh, in Mauritius, the Mauritius International Financial Center, can help companies with, by leveraging on it to provide them with enhanced credit terms, enhanced trade terms, and also have access to banks, to banks that will follow them in trade finance. The third pillars of our solution is all about supply chain finance. This is where we're going to go into details. We're going to try to understand the various um, terms, inco terms, what, what the client is doing, and then leverage on it to be able to provide financing. We can, uh, I can give you an example, for instance, where a client had a big order from a well-known buyer, and then we provide them financing throughout the value chain. And when we talk about global companies in Mauritius that have subsidiaries in, in Africa, we can also leverage on these receivables to provide the central procurement in Mauritius to have access to financing and to be able to buy. The last and not least, we talk a lot about credit protection. I'm going to uh, a lot of focus on credit protection. How this unique offering has enabled clients to develop in other markets, to have access to business intelligence, to really to make, to secure their trade and to grow their business. Our unique selling proposition is, first of all, that we will understand the client's needs, we will understand the supply chain, we are able to provide flexible and competitive pricing, given the risk we are going to take. We're going to try to leverage on various trade instruments, for so instance, we can, uh, when I talk about letters of credit, letters of credit is a fee-based product. It's not an interest base. In, um, last time I had a discussion with a company, I think Arvin talked about a private equity, where they had investees. And when we were talking to him, he told me, oh no, I need, when I buy, I need to pay 30% down payment to my supplier. And then prior to shipment, I need to pay the 70%. And they needed financing. Having fin funded financing in a country in Africa is quite high. Now, when we talked to him, we said, but why didn't you use a standby letters of credit? This is an instrument that allowed this customer to provide a security to their suppliers and enjoy open credit while paying a quarter of a cost, what he would have paid. This enabled him as well to be able to, to postpone, to shift the working capital requirement on his company by leveraging on the relationship that they have with suppliers. But again, as Vin said it earlier, there is no one size fits all solution. You have our team, our team at your disposal to really understand your needs and be able to come forward with trade solutions. This is where we, we will do bespoke trade solution, which is customer focus. We'll try to keep it seamless Again, the type of clients internationally and clients in the regions don't, will try to have a process that is quite quick. In the, again, in my example earlier, under standby letters of credit, documents didn't go through MCB. So the flow of goods is direct, the flow of documents is direct. What people don't know about MCB is our trade finance team. Our trade finance team consists of more than 100%, 100 persons with high level of experience. Within these, there's a, I think one third has more than 25 years of experience, and the second third is more than 15 years of experience. You have this team at your disposal. These teams will help you to read editors of credit, to be able to understand the risks. Again, I will just give you another example where a company received a letters of credit from a well-known, reputable buyer. By one of the biggest bank in the world. Yet, these letters of credit had clauses which are called automatic reduction clauses. That means if goods are not delivered on time, the letters of credit is reduced. The client did not notice that. The reason why, it was a big deal. It was a $5 million deal. He was very happy to receive the letters of credit. He said, yeah, that's good. But yet, when we, when we read the letters of credit, we said, but you're taking a risk. What happened if there's a late delivery? Something that sometimes it's not the client's fault. It could be shipment delays. 
nothing to do with the client. This is where we were able to leverage on AU Group and Atradius to protect this client, even though he had a little credit. The second part where clients don't, we are investing a lot on digital journeys within the bank to, to do supply chain finance platform. We have our very own IT trade finance squad. That means we are very focused today to have digital platform to help our client. And I think the, the last, but the most important part is for us, the customer is our, our raison d'etre. And today, the customer is not only Mauritian companies. The customer is companies that is going to help our African counter counterparts. This is where we are going to help them to grow. We're going to help them develop more business. And we're going to help them secure their business. So I'm going to go on Credit Protection, which is a bespoke solution to grow and secure businesses. Why protect your business? Why? A lot of clients that I talked to, they said to me, my customers are really strong. I give you some names. If I tell you DSL USA, what do you think? Big? Yes, you're right. But which company of Diesel? The USA one went into administration. While Diesel Italy is a holding company. Today, many of you might remember big companies like Kodak. Big companies like Thomas Cook. Thomas Cook was the second largest tour operator, which brought about 20% to the tourism industry. In lots of companies, they were very big. But with the help of our partners, with the business intelligence of these 260 million companies, what Christophe said, we are able to notify our clients. This is a business intelligence that will be given to the clients that works with us. This is the business intelligence that will also help our client to grow. And I think when we talk about this, I'm not going to use the word crisis because uh, Christophe said it's opportunities. This is where with a product like Credit Protection, you are able to protect your business and in fact, use it to pick who are your good customers. For instance, you might have a risk policy where you don't want to put all your eggs in the same basket, where you don't want to be concentration on one particular buyer. Yet, if you're protecting it with us, you can grow further. And the, the buyers that are very strong today, I'll give you an example of one, Debenhams. Debenhams is a big company, big company, yet we were able to provide our client with the information that when it was starting to deteriorate. But on the other side, there was a company that was doing very good, Azos. And I know there are companies on the African continent that are working with these buyers. So when they ask for business intelligence, on these buyers, what we are going to give them is a, this confidence that they can trade. And the buyers of today, I can't predict what is going to happen tomorrow. Again, if you tell me what will be the weather tomorrow, I will look at the sky. I can't. And, any, and many couldn't predict the weather, but our partners have analysts, have teams, who's going to look at market, economic, financials of these companies to really continuously monitor these so that our client can trade with greater confidence on credit. So I'm going, what is the value of Credit Protection? The value of Credit Protection, our aspiration has always been to help entrepreneurs to grow, to help them to fulfill their ambitions, and to, because this goes into our, our values to provide, to enable the societies to grow. Our purpose is to strengthen the risk management. I think our partners, uh, AU Group and Atradius, talked a lot about that. I will talk about how we help companies to diversify their portfolio. Clients today, when we, when we are prospecting new buyers, how do you know how strong they are? How do you know if they will be able to sustain prices? This is where you can leverage on our scheme. You can leverage on a scheme because when you leverage on it, we're going to accompany you in terms of trade finance. This is where we've been able to do that for the last, I think, 35 years. We've been very, 
prominent in trade finance from the start. MCB has been la banque commerciale. Commercial is trade. And with our scheme, we have provided clients with business intelligence, monitoring and recovery actions to be able to enable trade. And our solution is unique because it has lots of partners. It has AU Group, Atradius, Credendo, Aston ITF, CGI, all these partners are here to really help client to grow, to help client to mitigate their risk. In terms of portfolio, we pre-COVID level, we were quite high, um, but then came the pandemic. Uh, obviously, we've, our limits reduced. There was a lot of, not a lot of sales as well, but from, from June 2020, we've been growing. That give two signs. The first one, that business activity are coming back. The second one is our partners is supporting it. We've discussed a lot of, we've one big two operator uh, in the tourism industry and our partners supported us in it. So today we've been asking them to support us in helping the GIC clients to grow, to help the GIC clients to mitigate their risk. And with this portfolio, obviously, Atradius being our key partners, it takes 76% of our portfolio, Credendo 8%, 60% CGI. In terms of industry, we are on various types of industries, textile, tourism, seafood, manufacturing. You might see some of your clients in terms of these industries. So that means we are able to come, listen to your clients, listen to your client needs, and really help them to have access to trade finance and how to protect them. In terms of global credit limit, you will see that 50% of our portfolio is in terms of receivable finance, 22% in terms of structured trade finance. That means that limits that you're provided, it's really and really to enable trade. In terms of portfolio by region, 51% is in Europe, 22% is in Mauritius, and 8% is Sub-Saharan Africa, and 5% in Indian Ocean. Out of these 5%, it's good to know that 3.5% is in Madagascar. It's where you might see a scheme like this won't help to secure limits in, uh, on the African continent, but yet we do. That means the inter-African trade is secured under the scheme. That means these are not outside our scope. In terms of loss declarations, I think this slide really, I think in, we said that the proof of a pudding is in the eating. It's what happened during the pandemic. If you look at our stats, COVID 2020 and 2021, plus the non-payment cases, plus the open cases, it's more than 250 fights that our team has really assist our clients. Just imagine when we, the first lockdown, I did not know how it was for work from home. We had to really adapt ourselves. We had our partners which was backing us, and we had meetings, I think it was every week, to really understand each client needs, because each client were in different type of industries. We couldn't have a one-size-fits-all policy. And with the help of our partners, with the recovery collections of Atradius, we were able to recover more than $28.5 million. Can you just imagine that for the economy? This is, this is very important. There is companies, I can assure you, that if we did not recover funds for them, they would have gone bankrupt. And there are families working there. This is where we have really managed to help. And when you look at the percentage of recovery, you will see, but why are they 135%? Why are we more than 100%? Because a lot of companies had debt that was higher than their limits. So when you look at the LD amount, loss declaration amount, $33.5 million is more than the eligible amount. Yet the recovery, look at the recovery, we were able to recover 28.5. That means we were able to recover more than the eligible amount. And we still have open cases, obviously, but it's still quite good, I would say, uh, 111%. And uh, we've, I think, the approach and the collaborations with our partners has really helped us to recover quite a lot of funds. So the key benefits of our 
credit protection team is first of all to strengthen our client risk management and to really act as a business intelligence tool. This business intelligence has been used quite a lot by our client to really test the credit worthiness of buyers. This is really concrete. It's not theory, it's concrete. The client access limits and we're able to provide information. The second part is the flexibility of the scheme. The flexibility of the scheme is that the client can call us and ask for a limit on one buyer. But I can assure you, when I do presentation to client, I ask them whenever they said, my buyers are really good, I have no risk. I said, just give me your list. Let me screen them. And then I will give you the information. Last time I went with a client, and when he looked at the list, he's like, I never thought that this company had operating losses last year. I never thought that this company is not trading. And this is where business, this business intelligence help our client, really help our client to know who to deal with. I think the third one is really in case of default. When things are going wrong, you really want to have a partner by your side. You really want to have this assistance of a team to help you to know what documents to provide, when to provide them. I will excuse, on behalf of my team, I might excuse ourselves. We might be a bit too proactive. We might be able to ask for a lot of documents quickly, but we are always doing that to secure you. And fourth is really to have at your disposal our, our team, our expertise in, in international trade, and to be able to leverage on this expertise to, do, to craft receivable and supply chain finance. Last but not least, I would say you have access to a wider relationship with reputable partners, experts around the world, very good experts, motivated, who really want the ambassadors, the next ambassadors of promoting the Mauritian International Financial Center. And I really wish to, thank, to tell you, thank you for listening to me and really hope that you're going to engage with us, that our team can come and listen to your business need and let's talk how we can help you grow. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I think we, have, we are going to take questions from the audience and also virtually I think there is some questions that has been received. So we would pass. Yes. I just wanted to, to make a comment before we get to the questions and answers. I'm just mindful that um, in this audience, whether it's physically or on, online, we've got, broadly speaking, two categories of, of people. One of them are our clients who are actually in the operations and for whom what we've really been talking about uh, represents the daily crunch that they need to deal with. But I'm also mindful that we've also got quite a number of our partners from management companies in Mauritius. And the reason we've requested your kind presence today is for you to be really mindful what our common clients have to go through what challenges they're exposed to, and what solutions are out there for them. And how, by partnering with a bank like MCB, solutions could be found. So I'm just mindful that we've got broadly two types of, of, of two populations of, of collaborators on the call. But really, I would urge you know, all of you to, to really collaborate, to, to, to ask questions, to see where we can potentially provide solutions. Sorry, I just wanted to bring this forward, but I think uh, we'll value all types of comments and, and suggestions. Thank you. Sorry, Sanjay. Who would go first? Rama, you normally have a lot of questions. <laughs> Give you the chance to answer. <laughs> There's nobody else going to I think Boudouin. Yeah. I, I would like to say that um, for those who are not using the uh, MCB uh, solution, it's a real great opportunity for Mauritius uh, today. Um, to uh, be uh, the place to be. 
uh, for uh, companies all over the world who want to do business um, with Africa, uh, in, uh, of course in Seychelles, in all those countries. Um, why? Because um, now Mauritius has all the uh, specialization for trade, for securities, for financing. And really, um, if you are in London, or if you are in Paris, or if you are in Port Louis, it's exactly the same. So really, I think it's a great opportunity for Mauritius to develop the, this financial position uh, and fin financial location. And when you are looking on the other countries all around uh, the world, and especially around uh, Africa, uh, Mauritius is the place to be. Have we got any questions from the virtual audience? One is micro and one is macro. I, I must confess I'm very impressed with three components of what I've seen today. First and foremost is the business intelligence. That's really, I think, the biggest thing that probably you bring to the table. And this can help prevent people making the wrong choice or believing, as the gentleman just mentioned, that there's no risk, but in fact, there are many risks. The second one is, I'm assuming that these figures are okay, not like uh, statistics Mauritius. Okay? <laughs> that the rate of recovery is very good. You know? The rate of recovery is very good. I don't know uh, what methodology what strategy you use in some countries. I'm not going to mention these countries in order to recover these uh, unpaid uh, amount. And then there's the range of solution that you offer in order to promote trade and mitigate risk. You know, I work on Africa, so I know what risk is about. So what I would like to understand is the identification of risk through your business intelligence, the transfer of risk, the management of risk, and obviously the mitigation of risk in the supply chain. Uh, except for the Americans who believe that Africa is one country. There are 54 countries uh, in Africa. And how do you do the four exercise? One in terms of country, and second in terms of company, and three in terms of product. And of course, uh, I've been in government so for some time, so, and this has been a big concern for export to Africa. So how do you work or collaborate with the MIGAs of the world, with many development banks that propose export credit guarantee scheme, and how do you fit in within uh, that structure? That's my first question. My second question is to the gentleman who volunteered to give us an outlook of what will happen to growth I think there are three elephants in the room. I would like to be optimistic also, you know, and, and failing which we pray the Almighty, you know, that things improve. One is the duration, ferocity, and intensity of the war. And you know, if you look at the First World War and the Second World War, miscalculation can aggravate the situation, and this will have collateral uh, implication. Even though Egypt is not in Europe, and you know the impact that Egypt is having because of, of, of what is happening in Ukraine. 
So this is the first elephant in the room that we have to be very careful. Uh, the second elephant, I think, is at the economic level. What will the Fed do between fighting inflation without killing growth? This is the big issue that you face, that the Fed has to tame inflation. And it is increasing interest rate. They have announced how many times they're going to raise interest rate. They are retracting, you know, from quantitative easing, and they are also agreed to reduce significantly the size of the balance sheet. Now, this is a question of degree. And if they do it too fast, then obviously they risk tilting the, the world. Not only in a recession. In fact, you could be very close to a stagflation. And there are many economists that are criticizing the Fed that probably trying to go too fast when growth is fragile and even and probably at best moderate. Thank you. <laughs> so interesting enough, you, you are raising questions and giving the answers as well. So the job is very easy to me. <laughs> yeah, of course, if, if I knew, I would take the second part. The first will be for you, my friend. Uh, yeah, on the, on, the, on the economic impact on what's happening now, of course, all these kind of things are coming out from uh, um, economist brains using macroeconomic models and with best guess. So what I, what I shown you was the best guess of the economic research department of Atreides based on our experience after the, the, the crisis we have gone through and what we expect. What good is, is that it seems to come along with other economic research departments where um, they say, we say, because I'm representing Atradius, that we are reaching a kind of a ceiling in terms of inflation, and it's good, it's good, and okay, I'm fully with you. I, I'm, we are talking about the war in terms of credit insurance and economics. Now, the first dramatic situation goes about the people and humanitarian consequences. Of course, but we are here to talk about, about economics. So the eco economists say that we have, we have reached a kind of a ceiling and that normally, because not all prices are going up, and that before the end of this year, we should go back into inflation, to back to inflation level around two, three percent, will remain constantly higher than what we have had over the last years, but that were consistently too low. So the, 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 the new level will be around 2-3%, which is completely compliant with growth. Uh, if, you, if you have uh, the, uh, uh, an inflation around 2-3%, normally it should not prevent the world economy to grow. So this back to normal situation seems to be a kind of consensus across economists. This is also what your own economist told us yesterday. Um, so let's hope uh, if I knew exactly how to manage on a, on, with my right hand what would be the uh, ideal interest rate so that you can capture it, that you can keep on uh, enhancing investment but also uh, keeping inflation under pressure, then I think I would be rich. So this is, this is really a best guess uh, and it's also probably a wishful thinking there is a kind of wishful, wishful thing. We all do hope that we have reached this bloody ceiling and that it will uh, go down uh, smoothly. One of the good news, oh, one of the news that we have heard, and probably the people in the fertilizers could, could confirm it, uh, I heard that uh, the, uh, it has been seeded in Ukraine, for instance, so the seeds are in the ground. So we, we thought that the harvest of this year would be lost and it would have been a dramatic year then for the countries that you just mentioned, but it is likely that it will be harvested this year in Ukraine and also in Russia. The price is something else, but at least this kind of thing is something that we did not really expect. We, we thought that it, it, the, all the harvest of this year would be completely lost. So you see, uh, this is uh, uh, walking on thin ice. All these moving, sometimes contract, contradictory waves uh, are putting themselves together and we do think indeed that the, the months to come will be probably difficult but not it's not going to be a global crisis and then slowly at the, before the end of the year we will go back to 
sustainable and acceptable levels of inflation and growth. So I don't have more in my shop than these kind of uh, uh, general statements. Uh, and let's do hope that this scenario um, gets confirmed. You take the hardest part. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think the, the question was about more micro, about how we will assess the risk. Um, first of all, we're not just going to look at balance sheet. We will certainly have a look at the balance sheet, but we'll go into more details of these transactions. We will need to understand how orders are done. Are we, are we online? What are the documents? What are the delays of payment? What are the supply chain? With whom we are buying? What are the goods, the product risk? We're going to assess the times goods are leaving the, the, the suppliers and reaching to what port. For instance, we know, we know trade transactions that we're doing in, for instance, in Malawi, which is a landlocked country. But then they have to go through Mozambique. How from Mozambique are they going to Malawi? How is it going to Zimbabwe? Where are the various stocks being keep, kept? What, who, who is dealing with the warehouses? We will need to go in really, and I really and put a bit of an, uh, emphasis on that, into this level of details. We will need to know, to understand, to know the professionalism of this company. Why are the buyers buying from them? Who are they? What are the rational, the economic as well? So this is a level of details because why we do these details is to be able to assess what risk we are taking, what facilities we are providing. Facilities don't, could be non-fund based facilities, could be bank guarantees, could be standby letters of credit, could be, for instance, we can, in terms of financing, we can provide the letters of credit with a 180 days credit period in it. This is where we're going to even propose to the suppliers to go into finance. It's, it's each company, each business is unique. We will need to go to this level of details. This is our team. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be done in a week. Uh, this is not the case. And um, I will say that uh, Mr. Stanen's question will be the question what our credit risk committee is going to ask. And we need to be able to reply to them what are the risks and what are the mitigants of these risks. And this is, if we don't know the business, we don't say that we know everything. I'm really going to say there are industries that we don't know, but if we don't know them, we're going to leverage on experts outside to bring, it, bring them to the table, to understand, to be able to do. This is how we've been able to grow, by learning with our clients, with our partners, and continue really securing trade and developing trade. I'm not sure if I was able I know, to answer just to, Maybe just to add, um, the network and the knowledge of Atreides is also a key element as of that business intelligence. You know, having access to a uh, couple of hundreds of millions of customer database is a major input. Uh, not only on the solvability part of our clients, of the buyers of our clients, but also on fraud, uh, Christophe yesterday talked to us about that, where fraud or history of bad debt from that company, you know, where they would have gathered experience from other clients can now be shared for the benefit of our clients, for the benefit of your clients. Uh, and this is really, you know, from the oven business intelligence that can be shared and, and really drive business decisioning. Maybe one, one other thing. I think at Rajus has got also people on the ground. And in Africa, to have local information, you know, looking at balance sheet, everybody can look at a balance sheet. But balance sheet, maybe in Africa, does it say much? So having that local intelligence, I think, really helps, you know. Knowing who is, you know, behind the business, how the business is done, what is the reputation locally in country really helps. I think you've also spoken about um, you know, export credit agencies. I mean, the collaboration that we've had with mm. AU Group and Atreides hasn't been the end of the journey. Um, Baudouin and Ladislas spoke about it. Uh, Credendo is another key partner whom we've been partnering with. And as you know, they are a, a public uh, 
you know, credit insurance company, and their knowledge of Africa can also be extremely valuable. Um, you know, they've historically accompanied many Belgian groups into Africa, uh, many European groups into Africa, and I'll let probably Ladislas and, and Baudouin react on that, but they are also a, a key player on the continent who can also be key contributors to that decision-making process. I don't know whether... Yes, just before, uh, you were asking how uh, make the best recovery and what was the solution. <laughs> The best solution is to be uh, to have a, a credit protection contract. Why? Because um, when your uh, client is far from Mauritius uh, and he no, he's not paying you, your uh, atradius will uh, very quickly tell him that if he doesn't pay, the other supplier will have problems with their credit limit. So that big effect that the exporters, the Mauritius companies, are not far from the rest of the world. And that's one of the best things. I remember at the very beginning, um, there were a lot of disputes in textile. And when they heard that the underwriter was close to, to them uh, in France or in London, they were uh, acting very quickly to pay the Mauritius company because they were uh, afraid not to have any more credit. That's uh, a yeah. question. Yeah. If, if, if I can add on that, is we have companies that even pay the late penalty interest and all the fees just to get Atadius out of the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the bad guy, I <laughs> We have some questions online, my friends. Yes, we have three questions online. I think I will take one question online and then one question from the public. Um, there is... Joel Kavai that said, oh, we are planning to move a $500 million African business managed from Europe to Mauritius. So that's very good news for us. Thank you. We would like the one-stop shop approach. What can you do to make it easy to use? How to take value of your packaging? Ashwin, you want to, to take this question? Sorry, I'm going to have to read the question again. Sorry. <laughs> yeah? You, he just heard the five hundred million dollars. No, no, I, I know, I, I know, I know very well who Joel is, and I, and I salute him on the call. Um, he was in Mauritius uh, two weeks ago, and and we had a great meeting together. And I, I'd like to thank him for really considering Mauritius for for his future business uh, potential. Um, I think I think the approach that he's referring to of packaging, if I understand correctly is one that we like to refer to as bundling. Um, and I think we're talking about the same thing. It has been at the heart of what we've been trying to build, and, I, and I'm looking at Richard here, who is in the audience, uh, to make sure that we can cater to the whole breadth of the requirements of our clients. And you may have heard me speak, refer to earlier in my presentation to what the IFC in Mauritius has to offer in terms of central treasury headquarters, in terms of central procurement services, in terms of central invoicing. And that's exactly the way we are heading in terms of evolving our value offering. And I'm referring to the term value offering here in, instead of products. What do I refer to as value offering is the whole breadth of products and services. So to us, when a client is coming to Mauritius, it's not only about the trade finance. It's also about global markets. It's also about providing access to a whole breadth of African currencies. It's about making sure that you can hedge all your investments and divestments, that you can hedge your sales, that you can have access to interesting placement products for short-term cash management, that you can have access to the best-in-class digital platform to transact, which is what Sanjeev's team has been also working on, on the cash management side of things, to have access to world-class structured trade finance solutions that we've been speaking about, to have access to acquisition finance, which we've been you know, busy preparing for some companies Joel will identify with that, 
for, for their investment purposes and for their acquisition purposes to provide access to private banking and wealth solutions to the executives, to the UBOs who are structuring here, to provide access to custody solutions for their investment needs. That's really the way MCB is looking at it. That's why we've organized ourselves to be able to provide those solutions. And for us, it is about packaging, it is about bonding. Uh, and that's the way we're going to head. I hope I've answered the question, Joel. If I haven't, you'll shout at me next time we speak. Thank you. Thank you, Alfred. Um, do we have a question from the audience? I have a question. No? So I'll take the second question from online. Um, the question was, is credit protection applicable for medium-term payable facilities? Um, so my first answer is no. It's a mini short term. But uh, we've been discussing the whole um, half day yesterday morning to try to go this way. And this is what Ashwin nicely said, credit protection 2.0 or 3.0, because the, the question was, can it go to three years? So I think 3.0 will be <laughs> the best one. So um, this is something that we are working on, um, and we hope that we, will, we have a scheme to, to this, but um, right now we don't have. And when we look in terms of trade finance, we will certainly leverage on AU Group um, as a broker to help us in structuring a solutions it can be with Atradius, or it can be also with Credendo, because the question was also about Credendo. But I think that the question is quite relevant for Africa. Uh, we know that Africa is the land of opportunities for the mining industry, for infrastructure, and that requires heavy equipment. These types of equipment are usually sold on you know, fairly long term or medium term. We are mindful of that. Uh, we had a meeting with our good friends from BR this morning. Uh, these are requirements which we are well aware of. Uh, so I, I can understand why those questions are coming up and I can reassure you that we are working to try and get swiftly to a solution on that front. But bear with us. Uh, your request hasn't fallen on deaf ears. We, we have a, a rule for your group. Is uh, never answer, sorry, we can't. So, uh, as soon, we, we, we used to have uh, many, many questions from, uh, from Arnaud uh, regularly, I mean, uh, nearly every day. Uh, and every morning when I'm waking up in Paris, we have, you know, two or three hours um, difference. Uh, I have uh, two or three emails from Arnaud saying, can we do that? Can we, can, could we, uh, eventually, with those information, can, okay. I take the time. Um, we can't find solution all the time. We have to admit it, but we always try. And all people uh, who never try never success. So uh, we we do our best uh, to find a solution. It's not always easy. It wasn't easy 35 years ago uh, to uh, to find a solution for traducibles uh, here in Mauritius. It won't be easy to secure. Uh, 100% of your business, uh, of your customers in, 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 uh, in, in the 54 countries of Africa with all his uh, specificities. Um, but trust us, we will do our best. Just one thing. We need to, we need to be awake all the time. Why? Because uh, the underwriter change their, not their mind, but, the, but that their position depending on the risk. So um, I would like just to say today uh, regarding Africa, um, it's quite complicated to find credit line. But um, today um, um, the MCB is working uh, partly with uh, Credendo. Credendo is a Belgium um, company, a state company. So we can find some solution uh, for Africa, but it's quite complicated. Us on our level, um, we are on the way to have a, a partnership with um, a company uh, which is a broker in 25 countries um, in Africa. And I think it will be very interesting uh, also for uh, our partner to join maybe uh, MCB 
Why? Because they are the insurer of many banks locally. So I think it will be uh, interesting to combine uh, the information coming from the exporter or the importer, the information coming from the underwriter, somebody like Credendo, and of course, the information coming from the local bank, which is very important. Thank you. Do we have any question from the audience? I think everybody's thirsty. <laughs> I think there's, there's a last yeah. question. There, there, there's a last question online um, from Nicolas Van Damme. So, hello, Nicolas. I'm um, very really nice to, to know that you're online. Um, his question is, hello, question for MCB, please. Will MCB be able to offer a discount without recourse on African end customers receivable backed by credit insurance? If so, up to which tenors? 36 months for yellow goods will be eligible. Adrian, do you want to reply or should I? No, it's a simple answer. So we, are, we are working on it. We, we've been working with Nicholas colleagues this morning, yeah. and uh, we are definitely working to find a solution, and, and Baudouin will, will be firm that yeah. these are feasible solutions that we can find. So positive news, positive replies, Nicolas. We are working on it, and I can assure you that this is one of a big, big project for us. Um, it's a first. And, and we are really working with our partners to, to have this framework in place. So I'll say thank you to everyone online and thank you for all these questions and interactions. And um, I'll say yep. maybe Sanjeev. Yeah, so thanks everyone. I think it's been some quite passionate, um, you know, from the speakers' uh, speeches. Everybody's passionate in terms of what they do. Uh, good questions from the crowd, good questions, you know, online. Um, obviously, the discussions will go on. Unfortunately for those with us virtually, so we would need to call it to an end, but those present in the room, so the discussion you know, continues okay, around the drink. Thanks, everyone, and thanks to the speakers. Sorry, the cocktail is just next door. The cocktail is just next door.